Hello everyone, welcome back to A Service Dog's Partner. Today, Sassy and I want to share an event that happened to us at a store. And it goes into the subject of distracting and harassing service dogs. In our story, I really don't want there to be stereotypes added. I don't want there to be judgment. So I'm going to refer to these people as people A and B and they and them. So what happened was Sassy and I were in the store and we were going down to the water, um, water and soda aisle because I needed distilled water. And Sassy and I got there and there were two people there. They had a cart and I was looking at the water, keeping Sassy on the on the side of the aisle where there was where the cart opposite of where the cart was trying to give them enough room as possible uh, so that neither of us felt crowded and person a very nice asked if was sassy a doberman and I politely said no she's actually a roddy and we were talking and talking um, about how beautiful sassy is everything was really nice the per, uh, person a was really nice uh, person A did talk to Sassy because we were in a full conversation with person A mainly talking to me uh, It did not distract Sassy. Uh, Sassy um, was able to um, Concentrate on everything around me because uh, normally you do not want to talk to a service dog But as you do that it distracts them from the job at hand uh, Such as calling out to them saying they're very saying they're pretty It's easy. It's better if you actually turn to the person and say you have a very beautiful dog or of a um, Your dog is so pretty something like that talk to the, o the owner or handler versus talking to the service dog Because the serv otherwise the service dog is distracted from what they need to do Because they know you're talking about them. So anyways, um, I was talking with person a and we were having a good a good talk and as we were talking I noticed there was no distilled water and I was about to excuse myself when person B had finished um, loading up water into their cart and turned to me and said uh, is there anything up high you would like me to get while I'm up here and I politely said no no thank you um, uh, there's no distilled water and person B thought they um, saw a bottle of distilled water and went to go check on it and uh, I began talking with the with um, person uh, A again, and Sassy barks. And the reason why is um, person B reached up and made themselves look taller. And two things of that happened. Uh, the first of all, it was a um, almost a sudden reaction, and two, it made. Uh, person B look bigger. Now one of the things Sassy is trained to do is to alert me to sudden movements. Uh, so this sudden movement that caught Sassy's eye required, made her bark because it was sudden to her even if I had seen it. And I told Sassy, go, we're good. Come on, we're good, we're good. I know. We're good, we're good. And I told uh, person A, Sorry for her barking because a lot of people, uh, when Sassy barks, it spooks them, especially because of how Sassy barks. And I'm not sure if this is because of her or because of her breed, but the way she barks is it sounds like a slight a growl in the back of her throat before it goes into a bark. And the thing is, if you look up different dog barks, you'll find each dog barks differently. And this just happens to be her bark. You want to see her, you want to hear her growl. It is definitely different from her bark. This was a bark. And I apologize to person A. Person A was perfectly calm. You could tell that they have had dogs before. And they're, they, person A just said, oh, they're just talking. Person A was very, very understanding, which I was saying before, but person B, person B turned around and leaned into our space. Now we did have space between us, but it was the action of moving in and said, you bite her, I'm gonna bite you back. It was fully aggressive. And at first, I thought person B was just fooling around, you know, kind of playing back. I've seen people who do that. And so I, I, I didn't even think about it. And person B continued to be aggressive, so, which caused Sassy 
to bark again. This time it was more of a warning bark to for for me, uh, going, uh, mom, this is getting dangerous. Mom, we need to leave. And it again, single bark made her stop. And person B again turned to us say, yeah, I'll bite you. We'll see how you like it. Thank God for person A. Person A got person B to move out of the way and got person B to move on and uh, I'm just keeping Sassy as close to me as possible. Leash is extremely short because in this situation, when a person acts like this, if your service dog acts wrong, they can turn around and sue you for anything. And they will. It's very dangerous. And on top of that, as this, this person is threatening Sassy, they are also threatening me because my safety is now in danger. Um, my, she is no longer focusing on me. She is focusing on this person who's aggressive. And she doesn't know if this person is going to hurt her, to hurt me, both. And um, I have been working with Sassy for over three and a half years. When I first got her, this would have, act, would have come out completely different. I have worked for three and a half years to get her to listen to me, even when it's a hostile environment like that. And it, it just, you have no idea how vicious some of these people can be. They can sue you. They can demand your service dog be put down. And so I'm thankful that Sassy, that when this happens, Sassy is this far in her training to listen to me, to um, uh, trust me to judge this. But if person B had continued and we had not been able to get away, it would have turned out horribly either her trying to defend me or me falling into my panic attack. Yes, I suffer from panic attacks and I was this close to falling into one. As soon as person A got person B to move the cart far enough down that we could pass without the worry that we would touch them in any way that could be considered um, wrong to that person's eyes, she and I bolted to the other side of the aisle. Um, I, um, I actually had an item I was buying. Don't ask me how I was able to be able to consciously go ahead and pay for this item, but I did. I paid for the item and all the while I am looking around for this person again. Every person around me has become dangerous until I'm able to rule them out as person B because yeah he's with person A but they may have split off uh, so it was a major fear the only thing I really think that kept me together is sassy um, because one of the, the main reason why I call this a channel a service dogs partners because we are partners she takes care of me I take care of her and I put all my focus in, I gotta get Sassy out of here because there is someone in this store who has already been aggressive to her and put us in danger, we need to leave. Um, so, um, for the, this, this is why I, I'm making this video. Already, people already know, don't touch a service dog. That took years and years for people to learn. And there are still people out there who don't know, don't touch a service dog. But it's getting so much better that people are at least um, noticing that if a dog has a vest on, uh, that uh, it's a service dog, don't touch. Um, but uh, what hasn't been told is, 
please don't talk to the dog. Don't distract the dog. If you want to compliment the dog, talk to the handler. Talk to the person. If the person allows you to pet the dog, then you can talk to the dog because then the person, the handler, has allowed permission for the dog to take a short break from working to meet a person. Uh, I've done that a couple of times with people who um, I've uh, trusted or I've got felt comfortable around saying that yes, Sassy would love to see it, especially with children, because Sassy loves children, absolutely adores them. Uh, so there's that. Don't, don't talk to the dog, please. Do not talk to them. The other one is don't ever, ever threaten a dog. Don't be aggressive to them. The handler knows what to do. If the dog is misbehaving, the handler will take care of it. I had Sassy completely under control. Her job was to bark to alert me to a distraction that could easily spook me. That was her job. I told her I got it. She stopped. It was one bark. The second bark was to again alert me. This is dangerous. We are in a danger area and we were. Again, I stopped her once and she literally just stood there pressed up against me, but you could tell she was ready to defend me. And if it had gone any further, it would have been very, very bad. And this is true for any service dog. Even the good dog that is the golden retriever, these dogs will protect their owners. Okay? So you cannot threaten them. Back off and let the person handle it because a good handler will know how to handle their dog and if it's out of control they will leave the store but do not threaten them if it, and to be very honest don't threaten any dog because that is immediately how you're going to get hurt dogs will defend themselves so do not threaten them please I thought them being distracted by people talking to them was the worst thing I'd have to worry about. This is the first time I've ever been threatened, that my dog has ever been threatened. It scares the living heck out of me. And to be very honest, I am leery of entering stores and being near people. And I was already getting over that. So, situations like that. You're not just harming the service dog, you're harming the, ha the handler. So please, please, don't put our dogs in danger. Yeah, I, I, I know I was in danger too, but to be very honest, <laughs> I'm more worried about my service dog. When you have a service dog, you bo make a bond that is so, so strong because you are together 24-7. So please, please respect our service animals. Please respect our, th our therapy dogs, our emotional support dogs. Let us take care of it. Please don't distract them. Please do not threaten them. Please. Thank you for listening.